Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you all back to the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2021. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Today's tangle is going to be a fragment. It is called Rosone. It is by um, Milan CZT uh, Susanna Redorelli. And uh, it is very pretty. She says her inspiration is some of the facade from the one of the cathedrals there. And oh my goodness, you can check on Tangle Patterns and look at some uh, examples of the things they did. All right, so today I want to use this fragment to create a mandala and, or a zendala. And we're going to use this original zendala tile um, by Zentangle. And I did measure this for you today so that those of you that don't have tiles uh, from Zentangle uh, can be using the same size surface that we do. Okay, this measures across four and a half inches approximately, and uh, that is 11.7 centimeters. Aren't you guys impressed with me and my measuring today? I would be if I were you. All right, so one of the things that is gonna make your life easier today is if you have a compass, you can use that. I am going to do this old school. So I'm gonna pretend that I don't have a compass and, and those of you that don't have one can follow along with me, okay? Now, um, when you do mandalas, uh, the big thing with them is, is um, uh, patterns and doing things in the same way in different sections. So, um, and there are lots and lots and lots of fun um, tutorials on mandalas. I'm not an expert. I think I've had one class. So there you go. I understand how to divide things up. That's, a, that's about as far as I go. Now I'm gonna use my, my handy nail file as a straight edge today. And I'm gonna put this on my tile and I'm going to try to get approximately half. And I'm going to normally, well, uh, I'll show you. I'm going to very lightly trace that in all the way down and see where I'm at. You probably cannot see this. Maybe you can. That actually looks uh, pretty good to me, except it looks like I, I ran off a different direction down here. And this is the one place where I, where I will do some erasing because I once you start going, then if you have stray lines, then that can be confusing. So then turn your tile 90 degrees and um, divide again, uh, aiming for the midpoint. And that can be, if you have a clear ruler, that's the ideal way to do this. But um, you should see me do this with a, with a compass. That's <laughs> maybe not. All right, let me try to straighten this line up a little bit. I don't think that's gonna be a big deal. All right, now I want to uh, bisect this again between these two triangles. So once again, I'm gonna use my straight edge and I'm just going to sort of eyeball it and hope for, I'm looking at this one and this one in hopes that I've got something close to half. Okay, that's not terrible, but I kind of need to move it over just a tiny bit. So that would be, that would be uh, this way, maybe. Okay, now again, repeat. Line it up with your midpoint and then try to judge from these two uh, triangles that are free if you've got a, the approximate middle and you won't always. I mean, sometimes it's not great. And again, I will reiterate, this doesn't have to be perfect, okay? So my next fudge for uh, people with no compasses is, um, this is a newly minted quarter from the Virgin Islands in the United States, and uh, it says Salt River Bay on there. Uh, so I'm gonna put this down in the center here, hope that that's fairly equal on all sides. And then I'm gonna draw around this if I can keep it still. 
no promises. So I'm going to do one side and then the other side and I'll just finish this up. Really got the wiggles going on today. All right, so this is where I'm at. And see, we didn't have to have a compass, not once. <laughs> now, uh, I am just going to aura this line further out by matching the curve here. Hopefully I will have something approximately even. Not always, but it is fun. The voyage of discovery is fun. And when you get started drawing, it's, you know, you can do it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to aura the outer edge. And you can make this as thick or as thin as you want, okay? Again, these don't have to be perfect. And by the time we tangle over this, you know, nobody's gonna see these lines anyway. All right, so this is what I'm gonna have. So I have one, two, three circles, uh, orbs. Um, concentrically drawn uh, around the middle point, okay? So this this is it uh, for the prep work, okay? Now, I am going to put some color on here before we get started. Uh, I couldn't get, my watercolors were out of my reach, and so, so I uh, decided to use two ink tense pencils. These are Derwent ink tense pencils. If you have done my last year's um, project, then you know about these. And uh, this is sun yellow and poppy red. And I'm just going to do a watercolor wash like we do, have done uh, here before. And let's see, which way do I wanna go with these? There are two methods of using these. You can uh, squeeze some water out and get some of the pigment. If this brush is gonna cooperate with me. Not so much. All right, let's change this out. <laughs> okay, so two methods of doing this. You can apply this directly to the tile. This is um, like, very much like a watercolor pencil, but when, when it is activated with water, when the ink is activated with water, it becomes permanent ink. It does not uh, fade or uh, anything. You can get it wet over and over and it will still um, be permanent. And it is so beautiful and vibrant. This is why I love ink tints. You just don't get the color vibrancy with anything else. So uh, I'm not going to use a uh, rhyme or reason here. I'm just going to put a light wash of color and I'm also um, going to dab in some of my poppy red. But um, after the other day, I'm gonna keep these uh, both really, really light. So it'll just be a hint. Now this poppy red isn't my favorite red. I actually like the cherry red much better. Seems to have richer pigment. And for a poppy red, this is very pink. <laughs> so yeah, but I'm not in charge of that. And I can red it up with um, the yellow color. that you, of course, as always, can use whichever colors you like. And this is watercolor works exactly this way for 
for working on tiles. And since I've already demonstrated that, I, I know you guys are smart enough to come along with me on this ride. All right. I'm going to trade this out for my yellow again. Add some more. Here's my paper towel. You can add and layer color with ink tints as much as you want until it's dry. And of course, once it is dry, then you can layer over it, but what you have down to begin with is permanent. And for tangling, that is awesome. Tangling over ink tints is something that I love to do. I'm just dabbing down with, with wet, Yucky paint. <laughs> Beautiful yucky paint. And I'll come in here in a minute and put some of this poppy red down here. Dab that off. We should have something here that's pretty light. But we'll add just a bit of interest to the outer edge. And I'm just gonna mix those two on my brush. Like I said, once you have gotten uh, the ink tints wet, it is great about doing its thing. And I like to leave these sort of sharp edges and, and weird borders here and there, but uh, some of you may feel differently about that. You don't have to do it. You guys know by now, you don't have to do it the way I do. Do it your own way. You know what makes me really happy is that I see that a lot of you guys are reading and responding to other people's comments. And also on Instagram, you are um, uh, either following each other or uh, commenting on uh, each other's tiles from this project on Instagram. And I just think that's awesome. You guys can get to know each other too, and you have gained friends. They're probably going to uh, be more interesting than me, so... <laughs> Maybe not. All right. It's hair dryer time. Hold your ears and we will get this done. Now, hopefully you can still see the lines on this. I can, and hopefully you'll be able to see the lines on yours. So now I'm going to take my P in, and I think I'm gonna work in black today because I want a high amount of contrast between the pattern and the background. And uh, I'm gonna start in these little, um, in these little pie sections down on, on uh, the, the middle. Make sure I've got this guy, I think I do. So um, the fragment is drawn in a teardrop shape. Something like this, maybe not so uh, wiggly there. Then uh, we're gonna do a tamari type of decoration here with the little wave. And so I had trouble getting mine to line up and so I started putting dots in the center uh, where I want them to be and that helps me a lot to stay um, in place. And maybe not so far. Maybe not so far. Okay, now I'm gonna repeat this in each one. And these will, will each, each time we do this, they're gonna be slightly different and that is fine. Thank you. 
You want to kiss all the edges and the top. These don't have to be perfect. Thank goodness for that. I think we are going to, despite my wiggliness and craziness and all the rest of the stuff that goes on with me, we are going to have something really cool when we're done. Okay. Hmm. I'm getting creative. That's not always a good thing for me. That maybe it will be this time. Those dots really do help me stay where I'm supposed to be on this. But of course, some of you may not have this uh, spatial issue that I seem to have. And so you may not need those. Simba, take it easy, buddy. Well, I'm making a case for inking those, but I'm going to decide that after a bit. Okay, so now I have one row. And... By doing one simple thing over and over, we've created something really pretty and uh, a little meta pattern in the middle. So let's do the next row and see what happens, okay? So on this one, I am going to start in the middle of my little round head uh, on the row below, okay? And I'm going to come up and make this balloon shape in here like this, okay? I have to sort of, whoops, divide it in half. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go up and touch the sides, go up, touch the top, and come around, touch the side, and back down here, all right? And I, if I divide this up, and do it in this way, <laughs> I end up with a nicer result than, than before. Okay. So let's repeat that. Oh, whoops, I forgot. So now you just put in your little uh, Tamari decoration like so, right? You aim for the dot with a really good C curve and then come down, All right? And look at this little shape in here. That's interesting too, isn't it? Let's see if I can repeat this. That's always the question with a pattern. Can it be repeated? Which is sort of the definition of a pattern, I suppose. Shush, leave me alone. All right, here's where I'm going. And if you need to turn your tile, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I had a Spanish comment from somebody on one of last year's videos yesterday that was not very polite. And um, it was funny because I translated it and I answered in mostly polite. They, they, they basically said that I talk too much in English and uh, too much explaining in English, just get busy and draw. And it's, uh, let me think, oh, um, one gets bored. Uh, something about one gets bored if, if one doesn't get on with the process or something. And, and if I would stop speaking, explaining in English, then, then I would be more productive. So, um, <laughs> oh, and they also objected to turning the paper. So I 
I made a very, for me, polite response, suggesting that they turn the volume down and speed it up. And, you know, that turning the paper was part of the art form. So we'll see. <laughs> I know how to use Google Translate. It's just I find that, that most people that, that object to the videos are people that haven't watched enough to really understand what they're talking about. So that's fine. And I make these for you guys and you know who you are. And if somebody is not happy, they are welcome to take their watch time elsewhere. I am fine with that. And so some of these where I didn't get my uh, wedges completely even uh, are going to be smaller and some will be larger. And of course, that's fine. Okay, and one more. Like that, okay? So not perfect, but look at these. Dude, I am recording. Quit barking at everybody. So I have again found, well, I forgot my little thingies here, but I have again found more, uh, you know, another meta pattern that has, has uh, come out here. And that is so much fun. You know, start looking at the gaps that the things uh, that you draw leave called interstices, little blank spots. And see, even though I had very minimal um, evenness and all of that, these are really, this is going to be a really pretty design. Oh, I can't wait to finish. But we're not going to hurry. We are just going to do things our own way, in our own time. All right. Um, okay, now in the next one, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two of these elements in this space and I'm going to cross them diagonally, okay, so that one part is fat at one side and one part is fat at the other side, like that, okay? So I think I'm going to divide these in this way. Mm, okay. And then I'm going to go on the sort of like in Zeppel. I'm just going to sort of do a weird misshapen thing like this. Okay, I may get better at these, I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. And if I do it that way, there will be a natural aura here, maybe. Now the question is, do I want to change direction? And I think I do. I think I'm going to have another meta pattern if I do that. Now I know there are some of you guys that are going, oh, Cindy, this isn't going to work. And you might be right. You might be right. But I bet I'm right. How much you want to bet? I actually don't want to bet. I lost my last bet that I made. Well, <laughs> we're not going to talk about that one. Okay, so I'm going to go down this way first. Let's see, where's my end? Is it way over here? I guess it is. Okay, 
so this is like this. Sim, no, no. No. Good boy, good no. So I'm gonna have something that looks sort of like this, all right? Um, for you beginners, I haven't done in Zeppel uh, since, uh, I don't know if I did it last year or not. Maybe I'm thinking maybe I did. But, um, okay, so I'm gonna, so I'm making a curved line that divides this section, okay? It's no longer square, it's um, something else, right? And then I'm sort of making a curved aura around there and coming up and um, sort of curving in, that's one element. And then on the other side, I'm going like this. Whoa, what happened? Oh, this guy got way too short, didn't he? I bet I can fix that. I don't know what I was thinking on that one. Check this out. No reason we can't decorate them that way. That's what I wanna do. And when things like that happen, this is what we call an opportunity. So. So this isn't perfect and I've gone all the way around, but, but what I ended up here with in this uh, section is an orb here. And so can I repeat that? What if I do this? I'm about to take a step that can't be undone, Cindy. Hmm. Yeah. Now I can shade these into orbs and have something really dynamic looking here, right? This is called a variation or a tangulation or whatever you wanna call it. And then we would repeat it. And that's what I mean by if you make a mistake, is it something you can repeat? Because if it is, then sometimes you end up with something completely new and that is cool. Simba, buddy, I understand that the mailman is probably out there, but could you please stop barking? He's just waiting for me to stop talking so he can get busy again <laughs> with the barking. Uh, okay, so here's my end line right here. And so I'm turning the, the direction of this division. Say it's right here. Turning the direction of this like this. And so then when I come down here, I have a little diamond at the top, sort of. Don't talk to me about my square diamonds and stuff. Mm. Yesterday was a square triangle. Leave me alone about that. No, I'm just teasing. You guys are so kind to me, I, I have no complaints. No complaints. All right, and, oh, I did it again, didn't I? Where is my line? Is this my line? Why did I do that? Probably because I had to do that. Simba. See? Opportunities. Opportunities. And yeah, they don't always work out, but frequently they do. I almost didn't get back over there. I'm gonna have to pay more attention. Oops, <laughs> the wiggles are here. Now, Mari is watching YouTube, so you're going to hear him snort and laugh and that kind of stuff. So, I'm just letting you know now. He is entertaining himself, which could mean all kinds of things. 
And one more. And look at that, it, it evens up. Works out directionally, which is very cool. So down here, did I do that right? I think I did. Right. Uh, I don't think that's right. I think that's supposed to be like this. That's okay. It's okay. Nobody panic. Opportunities. Okay. So I have some opportunities here that I can repeat. And I can do that on these outer ones. And on these... Eh, Let's do that on all the outer ones. That one was big. Mm, nothing wrong with that. Go big or go home. You know what, I think I'm going to have an awfully good time with embellishments on this. So this will probably be a long video. Get your cup of coffee, settle in. We're gonna have fun. Just wanted something fun today. And simple, simple is always good. All right. Cindy, Cindy, Cindy. More opportunities. <laughs> I could do with fewer opportunities. So now I've got this. What do I want to do here in the insides? I mean, I can repeat what I did on the outside. Or I can do something that is different. So I'm not sure yet. Let's put in our decorative element. Like that. See there? And that's more fun stuff happening. I don't think this one's gonna be as fun because I drew it in wrong, but that's okay. All right, so. So I want this this away. I don't know what somebody is doing outside, but it is rattling in here. Okay, I am liking that. But this is why fragments are so much fun. You know, what if I turn it this way? What if I turn it that way? What happens if I put them all in a row and do this? What happens if I, you know, that whole discovery thing is huge with fragments. And that's one reason we have a bunch of them. If you really wanna learn about fragments, um, and get some really good examples. You can get those in the Zentangle Primer Volume 1, and that is now on Kindle for $9.99, which is a great price since I spent $50 for mine in hardback, but it is worth having in hardback. It is a beautiful, beautiful book full of art from Maria and Rick and the, and the gang. And they, they have several pages in the back with with different fragments for squares and um, 
circles and triangles. So, and who knows? So, um, definitely, definitely. That was my, that was the book that, that changed me. That was the book that made me understand the Zentangle method the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, that's the book that made me understand that it's not about the patterns. It's, it's about the Zen. And so, yeah. So look at what happened here because I turned these. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Look at what happened here. Now I've got a star with a circle in it, two circles in it, and some interesting, interesting with the background. This would make a great uh, stained glass window, wouldn't it? Even with the poor drawing and the crazy lines and all of that, this is really beautiful, right? Okay, so the next thing I think I want to do is I think I'm going to ink these little decoration things on this first row. by emphasizing certain parts of a pattern and not emphasizing others. That frequently gives you something interesting to think about. And like I said, fragments are fragments because you can turn them whatever way you want and still get something cool. is very sweet and is out shoveling our our my wheelchair ramp and um the the walk in and he did it yesterday for a long time and of course river and simba love to bark at him and and so he's out there now right in the middle of this video and uh, River is not going to stop barking, so I may have to take a break here and come back to this later. We'll see if she can be calm. The more noise he makes, the worse it is. Oh, that dog. That dog. All right, so now that I have this, we have really emphasized this this um, this light pattern here, and I, I like that well enough. Now, um, what do I, I think I'm going to switch to my 01 in black, and the, the reason for that is that I'm going to be doing some embellishing, and I, and I want a fine point to work with. But again, if you're going over watercolor or something like that, you'll have residue on your pen. You want to make sure you keep that clean, okay? So now on these uh, in the second row, I think what I want to do is, um, I think maybe first I want to aura the insides of these. So something like this. Now you do things your own way, you embellish how you want. Nobody was ever wrong in Zentangle for doing things the way they wanted.
That's pretty. I like that. Um, maybe I'm thinking of Ara-ing these as well. All right, so I'm going to continue to do that all the way around. And this will emphasize this shape. Cue the barking. we go. Now, I like all of this. Um, I'm wondering if I should do some inking. The other thing we could do in these spaces right here is to put some radiating lines like um, I'm thinking from here out. And I think that might be really effective. Got somebody outside talking loud, so who knows? I apologize for that. Unfortunately, it's not something I can change. All right, so that's what I've got. We're going to continue that. At least I am. Okay, here's where I was. You know, I bet these would look good with just a tiny bit of line weight at the ends, just a tiny bit. Again, the more of this kind of thing we do, the prettier it's going to be and the more striking it will be, but uh, the longer it's going to take. Oops. All right, Simba, are you down for the count, I hope? See what a difference that makes? Just putting a little triangle down at the end. Doesn't have to be very much. Right.
this is pretty tight work, but uh, it's worth it if you want to put the time in. If you don't, then you can speed up the video. See where we go next. And to my few, my faithful, my watch to the enders, I love you. I love you, I love you. You know, you're the ones I talk to. Watch to the enders. There you go. You all now have a club name. All right. So beautiful by emphasizing this we have also emphasized the free space up here now uh, i'm asking myself uh, what if anything i want to do inside uh, this aura i could put hatch lines uh, like diagonal hatch lines in there um, i could ink them or i can leave them blank as they are um, I think I want to think about that for a minute. And in the meantime, I want to look at these spots. This one ended up where it was supposed to be, but the rest of them have their own little um, extra space in here. And by the time I got done, it was pretty intentional on my part to do it that way. Um, so I'm thinking of just making a little aura here in the middle. A sort of elongated diamond shape and then I think I will remember in these instances when you ink it brings a lot of power so don't be afraid to ink in areas if that's what you want to do all right, so I don't have that much room over here, do I? I have very much a different space. And I think I'm going to go ahead and ink that. All right. Okay, so this is something that's happening. All the way around, we have one diamond shape, and then we have one of these little half triangles, and then we have another diamond shape. There are patterns within patterns within patterns with fragments, and there I find that so very cool.
And we still have our diamond shape even though these came together here, so that's all right. And again, we want to be repeating. And if you make a mistake, then you can repeat that. Assuming it's one you, that you want to repeat. <laughs> All right, so we've got some more little interesting tidbits here and there. Now what? I think I've decided to leave this middle portion blank. I'm still debating about whether I want to ink on the insides of these or not. I could ink and leave a little sparkle. Um, that might be problematic in areas. I think next I'm going to uh, catch these uh, shapes over here uh, between these guys, this interstice I don't know. Okay. So what am I gonna do with these? Okay, I think one more thing I want to do is up here in between these uh, things, um, we're going to, I'm going to just put a little something like that, a little triangle. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. So one thing I want to do here is I want to stripe, put a stripe underneath this. So I'm just going to R that curved line. And I'm going to thicken the top one simply because I had a stray line there and I think I've got multiple stray lines and so that'll be all right. What else could I do here? starts to look interesting and I think I want to again Ara this is a lot of Ara lines and uh, this is one reason we teach it because it's such an effective technique in so many different ways I like that. And we can do some fun shading with these uh, conical uh, shapes, I think. Um, all right, let's 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 keep going here.
Easy does it, River. Lots and lots of R lines. All right. See, here's another one with a thick line. Perfect. I don't know what happened to my chatty today. But she is missing. My Kathy is missing. My chat my chatty Kathy is missing. By making these lines curved, we have enhanced that that um, conical quality that this is rounded and not flat. And that's good. I like that. Um, all right. No twitching today, Sam. Alright, we got these over here. Look at how this is taking shape. I mean, I think when we get the shading in here, this is going to be amazing. I hope. I always hope. I live in hope. Y'all come live with me there. Hope is a good place. Hope is a place where we try to ignore the horribleness of our world and make our own parts of it better places. And I'm suspecting that each and every one of you does their best for that. To make your section of the world just a little bit better place. By coming to relax with me every day, you are, you are reviving your own spirit. You're helping revive mine. That in itself is something amazing. You know, I remember uh, Julianne and I both, when we first started this project, we were both in an artistic slump. And, you know, uh, I think she left me a comment the other day about, about how much better she's doing. You know what? I am too. This makes a big difference for me. It really does. Okay. Now, whoa, excuse me. Now, uh, this inside track where we have these shapes here, I am, am uh, very tempted to aura the inner, the inside of these and see what happens. Um, let's... Let's just do all the other Aura-ing I have done here has worked out really well. Forgot one over here, too. So I'm going to trust the Aura system to work. Remember, Maria Thomas believes in Auras. And she is a master calligrapher, so she should know. By repeating a line, you give it power. Um, okay, so on some of these where I have these diamonds, I think what I'm going to do is make some little dots out to the side where I have extra room and just have them get a little smaller as I go. That'll give some, uh, some dressing up. 
like that. And if I don't have space like there, I don't worry about it. Yeah. Just a little bit more dress, a little bit more interest, a little bit more fun. All right, now. So on these diamonds here, I think I'm gonna put, on these blank ones that I've got here, I think I'm gonna put hatch lines in those. Now, as to which direction I'm going to go, I don't know. And am I going to curve? Uh, probably. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, let's just put them parallel to this top line. Like that. That will give it some texture and some interest without making me go nuts. which is always something I'm looking for. That seems to work really well as far as which direction to go. Let's clean up these outer lines a little bit. There. Perfect. All right, each part of this, the more detail, the more care you give it, the more interesting it's going to be. I mean, you don't wanna overwhelm it, but anything you can do to, to find patterns and reinforce them is gonna be great. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and aura the insides of these on the inner track and see what that gives us, okay? Make sure I got around with all of the rest of that. I think I did. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is what I'm doing. That's a pretty good aura, Cindy. Oh yeah, I really like that. What do you guys think? I'm gonna repeat it. Now this is the one that I had the little snafu in, and that's okay. I'm gonna go right over it. It's almost not noticeable. Awesome. I really like where this is going. And when we add the shading and do that kind of thing, it's gonna be so much fun, so much fun. Uh, I'm giving you guys um, some good value today. Um, we're gonna have some fun finishing this tile up. Don't expect this out of me very often. But, Doing this just brings up too many possibilities to ignore. Nice. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. I hope you guys are having fun. Give me a like and a comment if you're having fun. Say, I'm having fun, Cindy. OK. 
Okay. I think up here, I want to ink this. Where it comes to the point of this sort of star. And remember, anything, any patterns this produces are purely accidental. Um, I did not have a plan going in. I just took each space and then as it came and then repeated what I did. All right, and so if I do that, this is perfect because then I can fix this curve. Remember, lightest touch possible on your pen. Let that paper do its job and soak that ink out. Yeah. Also, the slower you move your pen, the more ink is going to come out. So getting in a big hurry, like I was watching um, one of the videos while I was editing and I noticed how how fast I was trying to, maybe it was yesterday on Jonkel, um, um, how fast I was trying to ink that in. And I was just, and it wasn't that I was pressing hard because I wasn't, I was talking to you guys about it at the time, but I was moving fast. And, and that also prevents your, the paper from grabbing that ink and really soaking it down in there. So, you know, take your time. I think that's what I'm preaching about. Oh, sorry, the stomach is talking today. I could do without that, but apparently it it is uh, adamant that that's what we're gonna do. This is just gliding over the top of the paper. Here, now look at that, that four points. We've emphasized those. Um, oh yeah, I was drawing R's, wasn't I? Oh, I only have two more, good deal. Oops, well, I'm just gonna leave it. That's what it told me to do. All right, did I get them all? I did. Now, um, I think I want to put one more uh, set of auras in here. And that is gonna be uh, here inside these like I did on the other ones. And I think I think I'm going to ink these in. And my stomach will be quiet. It's a little bit embarrassing, I don't mind telling you. River and Simba and the kid, they just love, love, love making noise. That's all right though. I'm old and I don't like noise. Actually not bad. I like when the house is filled with little boys screaming and yelling and having fights. <laughs> I feel like I'm home. So see what that does. Yeah, let me do that over here. I have done almost everything I have done here has been auras. And, and you can see what a few well-placed auras will do for you. So where was I auraing this time? <laughs> oh yeah, here. Glide it over the paper, slow down. I 
right. Oh, I like this. The little dots are nice too. So very interesting look. Let's do this one. I don't mind telling you, every time I do something like this, is it, it amazes me. The results that I get are always so interesting and the effort I put into it is minimal. I mean, it takes time to draw, but that's the fun part, right? Now I'm trying to not get confused with these and these, right? I want to, to consider them separate um, elements, even though they're in the same square or whatever shape that ends up being, rhombus, around rhombus. <laughs> Leave me alone, people. I, at least I know the words. I don't know what they mean, but I know them. I hope you have enjoyed a week full of relaxation this week. I have been very pleased with some of the tiles that we have done. And I get the biggest kick out of going to Instagram and looking at all the gorgeous art that is posted on my on my profile. Um, you get those by tagging me um, at the Tireless Tangler when you write um, your description or whatever. Okay, so where am I at now? So I need to do these and these. I like doing these because there is, there is uh, the ability to add organic elements as well as be free to do what you want as well as have the um the predictability that gives so many of us uh who enjoy grid patterns um that you know okay if i did it this way here then i need to do it this way here that that predictability is comforting that is one of the reasons I believe that's one of the reasons that people that people that are that are really attracted to grid patterns um, are attracted to them is because there is safety in having prescribed uh, rules to follow or steps to follow, and it it uh, allows you to zen in a very different way than the organic patterns do. Um, so this is sort of, for me, uh, something in the middle because I have so much choice involved um, here. But I, and I have the ability to embellish, which is always a big win for me. So, okay, I've got three. I just need these two now. And then, with maybe a few changes, then I'm going to um, get some colored pencils out and have some fun. So y'all get, get your colored pencils out and get ready to have some fun.
Then we got um, even more snow last night on top of the snow we had yesterday or um, before. And uh, while the sun is shining today, which is great, the temperatures are still be well below freezing. And uh, so I'm still not going anywhere. Supposed to take River to the vet tomorrow, but I don't think that's going to happen with the way things are here. And I keep expecting to get a call from them canceling, but we'll see. Not sure I could get up the hill um, in there where they are anyway. All right, now. Oh, I, I love this so much. I really, really, really do. Isn't this fun? So, uh... I'm trying to decide still if I want to put in these um, some hatch lines. And I kind of do, but then I've got these over here. So I'm still undecided a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do for now is get um, my pencil out and do some shading and uh, see what we end up with. Now I'm gonna look at uh, what Varathins I have here. And I may use some of those. Uh, I have a polychromos that is deep scarlet. That might do well. I also have a permanent carmine in a polychromos. And, and I have a cad red that is medium. And that might work well. And then for the yellow ones, I've got medium cad red and light, uh, let's see, cadmium yellow. So cadmium yellow and dark cad yellow. All right, that's what I'm going to start with. So I will be blending with solution today just so that you know up front. Okay. So I'm going to take these pencils out and make little swatches here with dark. To light. Okay. So I know sort of what I'm dealing with. I believe this is going to be my dark tone. This seems to have a lot of brown in it. So I think that's gonna be a good backup for this. And then uh, let's do this, um, is this deep scar? No, I did this, uh, this one. This is the permanent carmine. Let's see what this looks like. So these two together, might have some interesting outcomes, I'm not sure. Interesting, okay, well I think I can use those. But I think the two that I want to use most are going to be um, the permanent, the permanent um, scarlet and the um, or the permanent carmine and the um, scarlet red, deep scarlet red. Okay. So I think what I want to do is is use this uh, permanent, um, the permanent. Uh, I think I want to start start with the scarlet. Let's see what happens. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is on these cone-shaped things here on the top, I'm gonna start by putting in some of this color. And I'm gonna use just real gentle little circles. Except when I'm stroking down the very edge there. And I wanna avoid my ink if I can, but you know, we can always add more at the end. So I want my color the darkest at the bottom and lighter as you go towards the middle. 
I will be using blending solution today. So uh, just be prepared for that. Now I'm gonna take my other one, my one that seems to be darker, and I'm gonna go down here in the corner and really emphasize this. And I'm just gonna trade back and forth until I get the result that I'm looking for. Now, um, I don't know what's gonna happen with this. I will probably put some white Prismacolor over. I'm gonna yellow this all up just a little bit from the middle. I didn't really mean to make that look striped, but hopefully when I get done with it, it won't. And then, let's try out some blending solution on this and see what we end up with. See if I've got anything I can work with or if I'm gonna have to rethink my, my process here. Where is my paper stump? Is that right? I'm gonna have to run our turkey on today. Is that what you think? <laughs> this is almost completely smooth except for some spots. This is why you always want a clean tortillon before you start blending pencil. And you will have a lot of transfer. See how we did. Not too bad. All right. So I forgot to show you this the other day. This is Gamsol. This is the version that I have that's readily available and it's on Amazon for you in the US. Um, the, the, but they have this everywhere. It's 100% um, pure odorless mineral spirits. Yeah. Agure, agueras mineral 100% puro sin odor. Olor. Not sure. Don't, don't depend on me for Spanish. All right. Just going to dip my tortillon in there and get it nice and soaking, soaky. And then I'm going to put my lid back on. Now, when you do this, uh, you do need something that you can wipe your tortillon on if things get crazy. But see what this does for colored pencils? Unlocks the pigments. Okay. Well, that's definitely nice and bright. <laughs> So I think I'm going to treat the rest of these in this way and I will pick the same side for the red going around, okay? Maybe not draw that up quite so far on these. And I'm putting my lightest yellow sort of in the middle and uh, over this red. This is the, in polychromos, that's the cadmium yellow. That would be like, uh, I, would, I would say canary yellow in Prismacolor would be the closest color to that. And this uh, dark cadmium yellow is uh, probably pretty close to goldenrod or um, sun yellow that Prismacolor has. It's a little bit darker. I 
There it is. Let's see what I've still got on here. This is the easiest, gentlest way to blend colored pencils there is, I think. Like I said, there are multiple methods for blending colored pencils, but this is the one that I prefer. Because of the pigment thing, because when you do this, it just, it just pops the color right out. I think this needs a little bit more pencil in here. It's not quite as saturated. as the other side. There we go. And now all of a sudden, if you look, we have something really, really striking going on. Now I think I'm gonna have to bring my red in more as as I look at that on the camera, um, it, it's a very different uh, blend than I have over on the other side. So I'm gonna change that up just a little bit. Okay, but still, it's a little more line than I was hoping for. Okay, now when I put my white Prisma on there, where did you go? There you are. I'm gonna put this across the very top. And yeah, it's gonna mute those colors a little bit, but it's also going to bring in a nice highlight, I think. And again, it's the wax and the Prismacolor that makes this so effective, so effective. And you can still go over this with your Tortillon or with your um, blending solution, but you're going to want to clean your, clean your Tortillon off before you start that. And when you go over that and come back with your with your white prisma, it will go on even smoother. All right. So that is a little stripey. <laughs> Cindy, Cindy. But you can blend that out. So anyway, this is what I end up with. And it's very much a different animal now than it was, right? Before, it's pretty pale and all of that. And now we've really brought this out. So I also want to use this, uh, what is this? The Permanent Carmine. Is that what I want to do on those? I'm thinking about what color I want to use for these, what I'm going to make into little gemstones up here. Um, and so I'm wondering... This is where I'm going to want my highlight. And then I can go around this with That has a nice look. As long as we emphasize this highlight, and we can put some jelly roll over that if, if it doesn't pop out enough. Yeah. And you can still come in with your uh, red and just put a little bit of color right around one side. And I'm not applying very much pressure here at all. Trying to avoid that dreaded line. That dreaded line. There. 
So these don't have to be a big production because we're sort of gemming them up. We just mostly need something dark and something really light. Okay, so just like that. Nice, yeah. Okay, let's do some more. Oh my God, we're already at two hours. Uh, this isn't gonna work. Um, okay, so, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do, because this is already almost two hours long, and uh, while I will take some out of uh, the, extra, the extraneous stuff out, um, this is pretty much how I'm going to handle this tile. I'm going to color in uh, sections. Um, hopefully, I will do it in such a way that will add to the 3D effect that I can get here, right? And then, and also just pop it up, wow. And I also might use some colored ink in here, like red, like my red micron, and do the coloring in on that. Yeah, and I may put a color on these stripes here. We're gonna find out. Um, I just don't have time to finish this with you guys. Um, I am thinking of putting red in here or deepening the yellow color in here. Once again, I don't want to put my pencil over my black ink uh, because that will, will dull it down and leave uh, some shine on there. By, by boosting the color in spots with colored pencils, it's just going to become more vibrant. Yeah. And uh, let's see what else. We can definitely add some color here. Maybe some of this, uh, where's my other red? I don't want this one. Uh, this is the Deep Scarlet and maybe put some red down here that we're gonna blend up. Like into a fan shape, like that. See how this works. The poppy red in Prismacolor would be good for this. These are polychromos pencils, and this is a uh, deep scarlet red. I'm thinking about this area and I'm still going to shade with a graphite pencil um, if I can find it. There it is. so here I would shade on the inside like this 
Yeah. So this will pop this, uh, this section up over these there behind, even though that was the central element. That's what we're gonna do, or at least that's what I'm going to do. Again, I don't necessarily have reasons for this, except that I know uh, what will uh, cause um, the pattern to look layered. And so that's that's the reason I do this, because I like to have the sections looking dynamic. I will blend this out. I once again had trouble getting my uploads to go through last night. I uploaded it twice, but it never did finish processing in YouTube. So, um, yeah. Doing my best to get these out there on time. All right. Let's blend this with um, a different tortillon. Yeah, this will work. And of course, I'll be cleaning up some of this graphite because it's me. Simba says stretch. We don't want to encourage that. Goodness. Big dog, big snore. Okay, so hopefully, I haven't looked at the camera yet, but hopefully you can tell a little bit what this does. And again, I will go over that again. The other thing is that inside here, uh, we could put, um, we could color that in a specific color if we wanted to. We could make them all yellow. We could make them all red. Uh, we could do, you know, something completely different, or we could color these uh, little aura sections here in uh, a different color ink, and I think that's what I want to try to do. I think I'm going to grab my red pen and uh, try put making those red, okay? So uh, give me just a second. So I had a comment from somebody, uh, actually, uh, it may have been two people, asking me, I had mentioned that, that last year several of you guys sent me um, some goodies um, and uh, wanted to know how they did that. Uh, basically, what we did is if they're sending me something on Amazon, I will provide you with my address and um, in private, of course. And if you want, though, uh, you can go to zentangle.com and uh, purchase things and ask them to ship them to me. Uh, they have done that several times now from you guys. And so uh, whatever you guys wanna do, I am cool with it. And very, very appreciative. Sometimes art supplies are way down on the list around here because, you know, food comes first and all that silliness. Now look what we're emphasizing. Isn't that cool? Don't leave me yet. We're not done. I think when we get done, we're going to be glad we stayed. I love the touches of red. The, the PNs have a nice bright red. And it's pretty much in the middle of the spectrum, so it's not too pink and it's not too orange. It's just a good red. All right.
if you're really interested in sending something from Zentangle, what I can do is put things in my cart, uh, put the things that I need in my cart, and uh, then they may, you might get this easy tea disc. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to check in with them. But that's how people have done it so far. I've, I've had, I had last year, like two or three different anonymous people than plus two people I already knew uh, from among you. And so you can do that uh, however you want. Yeah. Love how this is turning out. I love it. I want my Prisma colors though. <laughs> they make me, they make me comfortable. I, I know what I'm getting with those, but my goal for this year has been to use my polychromos more because I want to discover why it is everybody loves them better than my Prisma colors. I mean, if you can blend that wax away, then why does that stop you from doing it? Okay, so what if I put red on my other two? I can go through here and put red accents. And then what we have here is red and black. Along with the colored pencil, I think that's gonna be really cool. Yeah, I got those. All right, so now, I think I'm going to stick this up here too. The more ink I use, the less colored pencil I will have to use. What about this one? Should I make this red up here or should it be black? I don't know. I'm thinking about putting this last stripe in red. Let's do it. It may be too close in shade, but I think it'll work. Oh, I forgot my stripes over here. Drawing over colored pencil is not your best plan. Uh, it, it probably will work if you use blending solution, but it's still not a good plan. Uh, it can really mess up the nibs on your pens. And I don't want you to do that because these pens are not cheap. The goal if you're going over colored pencil is to go light and go gently with your ink. Barely touch down, you'll still get it down, but it needs to sort of lay on top of your, of your pencil. If that makes sense at all. And I'm going to go ahead and put a sparkle in there. Now I'm going to do these before I get in there with a colored pencil. really dressing up this outside and once we put the colored pencil on it's going to be amazing. So for those of you that just want to relax and have some fun, this is your day today. Um, oh yeah, I was coloring these in too, wasn't I? I'm 
I think these are going to be red up here. I just decided. We got snoring coming from every corner of the room, but I am awake. Just want everybody to know I'm awake. It may not always seem that way, but I really am. But if one is bored, one is welcome to turn off the volume and speed up the video. <laughs> I'm mean, aren't I? It's not like I'm trying to prove anything here. Just help you guys have some fun. So, yeah. Simba. Hey. Hey, my little snore buddy. Hey, 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 hey. Let the squirrel go, buddy. Let the squirrel go. It's going to be all right. The squirrel deserves a break today. Each little detail makes a big difference in the end. Each section you take a little extra time with or you think a little bit more harder about embellishing or whatever. And yes, that's not truly. This is why, by the way, that color is not involved in the original Zentangle method. It's because color adds a, a layer of thinking and decision-making that they are trying to avoid, right? You have to decide, well, how do I color? Which colors do I use? Should I use one here? Should I switch it off? So this isn't necessarily uh, the height of Zenful, <laughs> although the drawing part was okay. Adding color is, is more complex. So what if I what if I drew red? What if I colored this aura section? Excuse me, red. Like like that. Is that too much, do you think? I could also use white a white jelly roll on that if I really wanted to make things interesting. So uh, what I think I'm going to do, since I've shown you pretty much um, the possibilities, is I'm going to finish this on my own. I know that's not going to make some of you very happy, and I do apologize for that. But I think uh, by now this is something then you can, you can discover on your own. And, um, you know, think about the layers. Think about the patterns you want to emphasize. And just go and have fun. Make beautiful things. Make it gorgeous. Whatever you want to do, whatever you don't want to do, it is perfect. Now you know I'm thinking that once I get all of the um, all of the colored pencil in, what I'm going to do is maybe add some gold accents with my gold jelly roll. So something to think about. So um, here's a picture coming up of what I ended up with. And I hope you have enjoyed this video, guys. I appreciate you all so very much. And I'm going to see you tomorrow for day 19. Wait, is today 19? Is it? For day 20 tomorrow. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll see you then.